All right. So welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Kelly Ryan, for being here as well. Um, for our now third, let's see here, our third alumni career conversation that Allison Kessler and Liz Holloway have put together. So thank you very much. This has been wonderful. Um, I did just mention I've muted you all. Anyone who comes on will be muted, but if you do have a question at the end, we can definitely unmute. But for um, other questions that come throughout the presentation, please feel free to write them in the chat and we can get to those as well. So let's get started. So Kelly Ryan, which she'll go over Ryan Jaffe last name uh, down the road, um, <laughs> is now a two-time Whitman graduate, um, both under undergraduate and graduate program in accounting in 2011 and 12. Um, Kelly joined PwC after graduating as an assurance associate um, and now you've been there for coming up on looks like eight years holding multiple different roles and has switched to tax marketing senior manager currently. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to hear about your the change from kind of accounting to marketing and, and all of the in between so so I'll let you take it away Kelly thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you everyone for joining. I'm just going to pull up my presentation here. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can see it? All right, cool. I see some thumbs up. Um, so I'm going to start with a story. So as long as I can remember, the Ryan family has truly bled orange. It's really impossible to go through one of our family photo albums without being some type of Syracuse paraphernalia. You can see in the bottom right corner here, this is me and my father's Syracuse sweatshirt when I was a kid. There were numerous pictures. That one's just my favorite because I'm pretty sure he still has that sweatshirt um, with probably more holes and, and stains on it. But um, there's countless memories on campus. My brother, Colin, who you can see in the top right corner, also a Syracuse grad, he um, actually was babysat at a sorority when he was an infant, when my parents went back to visit. Um, I've got mem countless memories of picking out my newest t-shirt at Manny's every visit. And of course, so many games in the dome, which last time I saw there was a huge crane and things going on. So I'm sure it'll be different the next time I come on. But it's only natural that my story really involves me attending Syracuse uh, starting in the fall of 2007. So hi everybody, I'm Kelly Ryan, as Emily said, or Kelly Jaffe. I'm married almost two years now, and I will talk about a bit later, kind of like the the, the name change and all of that. Um, as you may have saw if you, on LinkedIn, um, I do go by Kelly Ryan, and that's um, a business decision that I've made, so I'll get to that later. But I'm really excited to be with you here today to kind of talk through my story and share it with you and hopefully hear from all of you as well. I'll be excited to kind of get to that Q&A at the end. Um, so we mentioned what the topic is about, but I kind of want to say, listen, there's, there's probably a moment in your life, whether you're a first year or you've been in the work world for a little bit as a recent grad, where you've been at a bit of an impasse. You knew there was a fork in the road and you felt that you needed a change but you didn't exactly know what that change was. Like the road ahead looked a little dark and mysterious and you didn't know what to do. So maybe that was, you thought about changing your major or you thought about transferring schools um, or maybe it was, where are you gonna go abroad? All of those things, you likely went through a process to get to that decision. So I'm gonna share my story today. And that's the story of someone who graduated from SU who was totally checked in 100% and knew I was going to be an audit partner at PwC. That was it. That was my goal. Um, and as Emily mentioned, I'm seeing you today as a senior manager in tax marketing, which is clearly not being an audit partner, or not that I'd be a partner by this point anyways. Um, so clearly my career growth has not been a straight path. It's taken many lefts and rights and frankly, even some U-turns. So I'm gonna share all of that with you today, but let's take a step back and first kind of talk about my story at Syracuse. So um, August of 2007, I stepped foot on campus and I just felt the endless opportunities. I loved the, what I 
loved most about Syracuse was I wanted to be at a school where I could walk in the quad and I could see a few faces that I knew and I could also see some faces of people that I didn't know and there was opportunity there to meet others. Um, and the way I always describe Syracuse to people is it's as big or small as you make it. So the more things that you join and the more circles and networks that you form, the school will feel smaller because you'll constantly feel that you're a part of something. Um, so as you can probably guess, I'm one of the students who didn't really want to miss out on anything. <laughs> Over five years on campus, completing my bachelor's and master's, I was quite, quite involved. Um, so from the Whitman side, I was a member of Beta Alpha Psi, the accounting fraternity. I was on the competition team for SIFE, which now is called Enactus. Um, that's the photo in the middle. Um, I was a TA uh, for a few different in, um, professors. I also, in the sports realm, I was captain from sophomore year on of the SU club gymnastics team. You see that photo on there. Um, I was definitely a season ticket holder for SU basketball. The years that I went, football was not as good as it is now. So that was really more like a freshman year thing to buy the season tickets. And then sophomore year on, it was all basketball. Um, so Greek life, I did join Greek life and I held um, the office of VP finance. No shock there since I clearly will talk about how I was a numbers person. Um, and then I did some other things on campus. I actually babysat and I studied abroad in Florence. Um, and the bottom right picture is my husband who also went to Syracuse. So um, it's definitely in the family. Um, on the last slide, I forgot to mention that my, I have multiple uncles, my brother, my parents. It's endless of who went to Syracuse. So it was kind of written in the sand there for me. Um, so needless to say, I definitely was not sitting in my dorm room watching TV all the time. I was out and about. So let's kind of talk about really my, my journey in Whitman and picking accounting as a major and how that led me to working at PwC in New York City. Um, so business kind of has always been a path for me. I don't know if any of you can relate, but I have um, like the sign off from my parents' emails literally will say regards, Mark, instead of love, dad. He also seems to sign texts that way at times. He's a very business oriented person and um, I love him for that. You know, he lives and breathes corporate America. He's had a great career at MetLife where he started in sales and he ended in financial planning, or I shouldn't say ended because he's still working. He loved working that much. Um, but he's always been my North Star in terms of work ethic and really driving towards success. So my accounting story starts actually back with Accounting 151. I don't believe she specifically teaches that course anymore, but I had Professor Wagner for anyone who's had her. She's wonderful. And what I noticed very early on was numbers came really easy to me. Um, during the class, I was actually introduced to PwC because they do a case study competition. Um, I'm not sure if it's still running or what name it's taken on because things change all the time. But at the time, it was called x -Tax. And essentially, it was a comp case competition, and there was a number of different ages that were um, asked to participate. So every team needed one freshman. So I kind of got recruited to join one of these teams. I really didn't know much, but I was doing well in my accounting course and thought, hey, why not? It's another way to make friends. Um, so through that competition, I was actually able to meet Don Favor, who some on the phone may know him. Um, he's a newly retired PwC partner, and he was the relationship um, partner for Syracuse University, and he had attended SU as well as his daughter. So I was super, super impressed with the amount of time he spent talking with all the students, but especially even someone who's a freshman who hadn't picked a major yet and you know, how, who would he know the difference between me and anyone else? Um, I noticed that he, he took the time no matter who you were. So by the time the career fair came around, I was really wooed by these accounting firms. I couldn't get over how much time they all spent talking to the students, um, how they were really interested in hearing about life outside of Whitman. Um, they just really made connections. So I declared my major of accounting between doing well in the class, meeting these awesome folks in the real world. I, I was like, perfect, set. 
So over the next few years, I worked extremely hard and honestly probably stressed a bit too much. So side note here, make sure that you're working really hard, but you're also enjoying campus. You're going to those games, you're seeing friends. Don't forget about that because I can promise real world stress is much different. And you look back and think, why was I stressing about the silly things in college? Um, so for me, working really hard was really important and it definitely paid off. I was actually um, asked to participate in all of the big four leadership programs, which is essentially they're like a three to four day program that they run. Um, this is prior to your internship where you really get to know a little bit more about each of the firms and you get to get a sense of who you'd be working with and really the culture. Um, so once I participated in those, I again felt between, you know, call it luck, but also call it hard work. Um, I was extended internship offers at all four. And I was at this very interesting road of, okay, what do I do? How do I choose? Um, so I was particularly impressed with PWC's um, coaching and mentorship. I could tell how much time, it didn't matter what level they were, they were joining in at these leadership programs and telling us their stories, getting to know us. And it was just in a way that I felt that they cared about me and I knew how large these firms were and I knew how many people they're all working with on a daily basis. And they really, at the end of the day, their stakeholders are their clients, but they took time away from their clients to speak with us and make us feel that they want, you know, me and others to be a part of their firm. So decision was made. I was going to go intern at PwC in New York. And um, I was lucky enough to receive a full-time offer and they were a little sneaky in the HR department. They saw that my birthday was right towards the end of the internship. So on July 29th, I was extended a full-time offer, which was such a wonderful feeling knowing I was going back into my senior year with a job. And it was so cool to call my parents and say, I got the best birthday present. I have a job. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to jump into kind of my long and winding road at PwC. So when I accepted my full-time offer, I joined the technology, media, and telecommunications group, which was called PMP at the time. Names change all the time in the business world. This is something, no matter what company or whatever you do post-graduation, just warning things change right under you. It's crazy. Um, so I joined as an audit associate in that TMT group. And I was thrilled. I dove right in and I started working on some really cool clients. With TMT, I thought, okay, well, if I'm going to be working on numbers, let's spice it up. Let's make it a little more interesting. And let me try and work in a group where it's something tangible I understand. For me personally, I found that more interesting than maybe working on a banking or private equity type client um, where it is all these huge numbers. And I, I didn't feel as grounded in that, but when working in TMT, I knew I was going to be working on clients that were, um, for example, I worked on a music publishing client. And so when I'm auditing things, it was me learning, okay, well, they say they made this much money and they name one of the driving reasons Adele. Well, okay. Every time Adele puts out an album, everybody buys the album. It was easy for me to connect and understand, oh, this is why their revenue is this way. This is why X, Y, Z. So I worked on some cool clients, music publishing clients, um, TV, both cable stations, um, pay TV channels like Showtime. And I got to travel a lot. That was also super cool. So I went, even just in my first year, I was in Denver and Nashville, um, Chicago, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And these teams really consist of a bunch of young professionals. They're certainly obviously our partners and senior managers, but the bulk of the team who's traveling and doing the work is really folks who are around your age. Um, and so there was this very serious work ethic. Everyone who, who joined PwC is, I would say, has that kind of like high performer mentality, um, which can be a lot, but it's also really fun to work around because you constantly feel motivated to work hard for your team. Um, so, my first year was certainly intense. I was really determined to have quality work product and there's a learning curve, right? Like you take an audit course at Syracuse, but there's still going to be nuance to the role and the types of companies that you're auditing and what you're doing. So learning that that first year um, 
is, is a steep hill. Um, what I found really helpful was so many folks on the PwC side take time to coach you. And I found personally, this is one of my keys that I'll talk about later, but one of the keys to success I like to say is um, asking a ton of questions. Um, you know, you might get that, oh, they're too busy right now. Ask if you can put some time on their calendar for the next day, just 30 minutes. And for me, it was a lot about asking the why. Why are we doing this specific test? Why are we doing this specific project? Understanding that bigger picture so that you don't just feel like a cog in the wheel, but you actually understand your part in the larger team and you understand the ultimate goal of what you're working on. So um, there is definitely a learning curve in terms of busy seasons, which I can speak to accounting, but I'm sure in any role you work in, any field, you're going to have a busy time. That's just kind of how the cyclical life works. So for me, busy season is a time in accounting where you're really trying to cl help close the account, the client's books, get things done. And um, it was, it was a lot, but I felt really strong about the work product I was putting out. I loved working with my team and there was the positives that even if you are staying up late, you're working with folks who now really have become more than just a coworker next to you. They're your, friends. I mean, you spend so much time with them, they know the ins and outs of your life. And it's really, it does end up being fun. So after my first year, I did actually have my first like, is this for me moment? Um, I kind of been floundering in figuring out who's my mentor, who's someone who I can look up to and say, that's where I want to be in five years. How do I do that? Um, I was also at the time feeling a bit disconnected to my work. Um, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that and how I've grown from what I was looking at in that moment. I felt like I was working really hard, but I didn't feel that I was helping the world. And I put that in quotes because it seems far fetched. And for me, I didn't feel the connection of me auditing financial statements. How does that help people? And, and in the truest sense of the word, we're helping people feel comfortable with public companies financials so that they can invest in it and it is truly actually helping our economy grow so there is a, an actual answer to that for me though that felt a little too far it felt like i was saying oh okay well i'm glad central park looks really pretty because in my taxes i pay some fee that would go towards you know state parks and things like that i don't walk into central park and feel like oh i'm a part of why this looks so pretty so that was where my disconnect was at the time. Um, so after speaking with some partners and career coaches at the firm, they made some adjustments with me. We talked about maybe shifting some accounts. They introduced me to some other like strong um, female mentors that I could work with. They also put me on some new clients to kind of just grow my network a bit more. So another year goes by, I work really hard. I have built, I've started to build that Kelly Ryan brand name. People know me. Oh yeah, she'll get things done. She works really hard. And I started getting asked to be put on additional teams, um, which was awesome. And also a little bit of a double-edged sword because as soon as I finished work on something, someone else wanted to, to pick me up. So that was great, but it certainly made me quite busy. Um, so after this second year, I still felt really proud in terms of what my output was, but I still felt like, mm, I don't know, there, there's not something there. So this is kind of where my first big turn happens. I was able to complete um, what we would call a tour of duty or a fellowship in corporate responsibility. Now I mentioned earlier that I was on the site or now named an active team. Um, and for those who aren't as familiar with it, um, I loved their, their motto back when I was in, I don't know if it's changed, but their mission statement was a head for business, a heart for the world. And that was kind of stuck with me. And I was like, I don't feel that in accounting. I don't feel like I have that heart for the world. So joining the corporate responsibility team, um, I got to work on some amazing projects. I actually worked with our team and time for kids to help put out a financial literacy magazine for students um, in grades um, second through sixth. And it would go out in the week, in the month, once a month in the Time for Kids um, bundle that goes out to schools and anyone who's already subscribed to that. And I started having that like, ooh, okay, I feel like I'm helping. 
So the tour lasted about a year and I learned a ton about myself and a lot about the firm. I felt passionate about what I was doing. I felt like I was helping to create something tangible. I saw my impact. Um, but I also learned on the skill side, I learned that I had really good project management and time management skills. I learned that I had skills that were kind of outside the, the numbers part, the accounting part. And I also felt that my emotional intelligence was being used in a, in a better way. Um, so year comes and goes, and with many tours of duty, um, and I'm, I can't speak to other companies, but um, a full-time role did not end up opening up. I thought maybe I would do this, and then I would move into this group full-time, and unfortunately, they didn't have space at the time. So talk about a U-turn, I go back into audit, and I had to have this like mental shift at that moment because I could go into it and be upset and say, ugh, I, I already liked what I was doing better. I don't want to go back to this other place. But I knew that that really wasn't going to help me in any way. Um, so even though I wasn't jumping for joy, I knew that I could go back. I could bring the new skills that I learned. I could bring the network of people that I learned and just go in with a positive attitude. And again, like my dad had taught me, just work really hard. So I brought in those skills. I started working. But what was really cool is I found a way to start to vocalize where I wanted to take my career in a way that wasn't daunting to my audit teams. I, I had proven now that I was going to work hard. I didn't have one foot out the door. I said, I'm with you. I'm working. But in the meantime, these are some things I'm thinking about. And now that I had the buy-in of folks that I worked with, they were willing to help me because I think what they determined was they had invested in me, frankly, really when I was a, a sophomore. And I mean, my first time I met them as freshmen, but the leadership was after my sophomore year in school. So they've spent so much time investing in me and helping me learn and grow that losing me as an employee would not benefit them. And it's such a big firm and there's so many different things that we do that they were willing to help me find a new home at the firm. So I talked with HR, I talked with partners, and I kind of gave them a list of like, these are other things I think I'm interested in, but I'm not really sure. And I'm going to touch on kind of the how next, really like the bulk of what I want to talk about. But first, I just kind of want to complete my, my story here um, in my timeline. So I lucked out and had a partner reach out to me and said, Hey, I know you've been looking. I had even applied and almost and accepted a role in recruiting. Um, I had even had some informational interviews at companies outside PwC. I was really all over the map. I didn't know exactly where I wanted to go. And I had this partner call me. Frankly, I was near my wit's end, to be honest with you. And I was like, maybe I'm just going to quit without a job. And I would not suggest that. My dad definitely would not suggest that. And I didn't do it, but I was, I was thinking about it. Um, and so for me, a partner called and said, hey, there's this geography marketing role, and they think you should apply. And my first thought was, what the heck is geography marketing? I have no idea what that means. Am I like looking at a globe? Like, what, what are we talking about here? And he said, listen, I think you have these dark colored glasses on and you think that the whole firm is going to make you feel the way you currently feel while you're in audit. But really each group within PwC is its own little mini culture and its own little group and has its own personality and different goals and really can be a completely different job and career. So why don't you just apply? You don't even have to take it. You don't, even if you, maybe you won't get it, maybe you will. I end up getting the role and the, I'll talk a little bit more about how I did that later, but it was, it was great to be able to say, I'm coming from client service and now I'm going to go into a marketing role where the goal of marketing is to help sell our services to clients. I know what clients want because I sat with them. I was on the other side. So I was able to bring that experience in and really help them feel like, I was an asset to marketing, even though I do not have a marketing degree. You know, the most marketing I have was um, our classes during, I think that's core when we take marketing at first. Um, and that's, that's truly my only course. So um, I definitely did some learning on my own getting ready for the role, which again, I'll talk about later. But 
lo and behold, I joined this geomarketing group as a senior associate. And I kind of dive into the deep end. I'm like, okay, here I am. Here are skills I bring. Here's network I bring. Let's see how this goes. And to be frank with you, I went in with pretty low expectations. I was like, mm, I'm not sure I'm going to like this. I don't even know if I like marketing. And lo and behold, it ended up fitting like a glove. I love being able to still interact with clients or events and um, other marketing channels such as webcasts and emails and thought leadership and using tools like LinkedIn and marketing tools. Um, but I also felt like, okay, the other parts of the firm that I love, I'm able to experience. So for example, I, was, I had a bit more time on my hands and I was able to then volunteer with our corporate responsibility group to teach financial literacy, I would say once every eight weeks at a school in New York. So this I kind of want to loop back around to that point where I was saying, oh, well, I wanted to help the world. Sometimes I think that millennials and folks get a bad rap because people think, oh, we don't want to do hard work. We just want to, you know, start a nonprofit and do these good things that we want to like fight climate change. I'll, whatever, however you look at that, people look at that and say, oh, well, they don't want to work hard and make a living. And I just think that's so silly. It's, it's a bad way of looking at it because frankly, what it is is we want to have time in our lives to help and give back in some way. And I found, okay, what is that, that secret sauce? How can I make that happen without maybe having a full-time career in corporate responsibility? Because frankly, um, I've talked to many students about this. They're really, it's really hard to get jobs in corporate responsibility. Um, if you think about just the way corporate America works, you're asking for a job where you're giving money from the company away and you're not making money for the company. So just like base level, there's not going to be a ton of jobs in that area. Um, so for me, I thought, okay, how can I grow my own way? How can I be happy, but be passionate about what I do and spend time outside of work doing it and through work to do things that really make me feel great. So I kind of told you my story and now I want to move back to how I really made those moves. Um, so to be clear, when I started feeling like mm, maybe audit isn't the place for me, maybe accounting isn't the place for me, I basically could crumble up in a ball and cry. I could not see forward. I just felt like I know it's not this, but I don't know what it is. And I was so thrown off on where to even start. Um, so this happens to me, again, I'm talking about career change, but just for folks on the phone who maybe you haven't gone through this yet, maybe you haven't started work yet, but yet you've had some type of crossroads. When I have big changes, sometimes I, I feel paralyzed by that. And maybe you felt that way too. Um, so let me start with where I began with kind of like assessing my interests and skills. What I did was I thought about my day. I brought a tiny little journal. I have one out of reach, so I can't show you, but I have a little journal and I bring it to work. It's truly tiny so that it was a little discreet. And while I was in audit, I would just spend some time during the day when I would jot down when I was feeling really happy. Like, what did I just do that made, that brought me joy? And when I was feeling stressed out or not great, write down what was going on in that moment, what was kind of causing me to feel that way. I determined pretty quickly, um, as bad as this sounds, I loved finding problems with what was going on in the, in the company that I was auditing, because what it meant was I was able to then go sit with the client, strategize, how did this go wrong? What can we do to fix it going forward? I got to interact with the client. Then I'd come back to my desk and then I'd have to write a five page memo on what went wrong. And I'd sit there and be like, mm, I don't like this part as much. I wanna go back and talk to the client again. Um, so I started just taking those little notes. My second bullet, I don't know if anyone has seen any of these, but I'm calling them the silly tests. But what I mean by that is there's personality tests. There's tests that kind of help aptitude tests showing you, you know, where, where do your interests lie? Where are your strengths? Um, so, one of them that I took that was, it was honestly so ironic. Um, it basically asked me to t play 12 games and the games were like, okay, here's $5. Would you give $2 to someone else? Would you keep it and invest it? Here's another game. 
move the slider. They were all very random and, and they don't explain the reasoning behind why you're doing these 12 little games. And at the end, it popped out with traits that I had, careers that would fit for me. And as you can see, it said that I, I like learning. I'm internally motivated. Um, I have um, strong attention throughout and that I consistently process things rather than having like um, lulls and, and highs. And I found this very funny that it said strategic planning, writing, and marketing management were my top careers. And what I didn't put here because I didn't want it living on there forever was it literally listed accounting as, as one of the lowest career choices for me. And at this point, I've invested a lot of time, a lot of money into building this career. And I started freaking out. I'm like, and again, now 2020 hindsight, I was really only like a blip into my career. But at the time I was like, oh, I can't switch careers. I've spent so much time. I've really like built this and now I'm going to be something different. Um, you'll see some others that talk about being a natural people person. That was clear when I knew I loved talking to the clients, big picture thinker. When I, where I was in the world of audit, I was really doing some tasks and not feeling part of the bigger picture. Um, so I, I use this to my advantage. I'm like, okay, here are things I know. Now, what they don't have in the world, and I would love that someone can create it, is I wish I could have put this and emailed it to some system and it just popped out and gave me a job title and a job description. And then there I go, hop on LinkedIn, Indeed, whatever it is, and start looking for jobs. Unfortunately, that is not made in the world that I know of yet. So you're unable to do that. So I felt, okay, now I know what I like. What is the role for me? Um, so next I started networking. Networking, I mean that in all sense of the word. I mean, literally you're talking to a friend, ask them what they do. What do they like about their job? Go to Syracuse events. Syracuse and um, PwC have a numerous events. We as alumni have events. Um, I'm on the Young Whitman Advisory Council, if any one of you have heard of that. Um, and we help put on events. Um, obviously, your career center and you have amazing folks. Start networking. Just start asking people, what do you do? What do you like about what you do? Volunteering. Now, this one gets a little tricky. So for me, working at PwC and looking for other roles at PwC, it was a little bit easier because I could kind of ask, um, you know, with corporate responsibility, are there any projects that you need just a little extra hand on, maybe eight hours a week? Is there a place that I can kind of just tap in a little bit while still kind of staying in my lane full time so that you can dip your toe in the water? This can certainly be done. I know, especially now, entrepreneurs, people start to kind of create that side hustle before they maybe jump in full term. I think that's important. Just volunteer, spend, give your time to what some other folks are working on so that you can kind of test it out. It's a risk-free trial. Um, and then I want to talk about spending some time upscaling. Now, this is a term used a lot in business. You may not have heard it yet, but in the micro context, it really just means learning new skills. Um, I'll talk about the macro level at the end of this, but in this moment, what I'm talking about is just learning new skills. So if you have time um, outside of whatever your normal responsibilities are, see if there's any online courses you can take that are free in an area that you're interested in. Um, see if there's just blogs that you can follow, books that you can read. There's ways to start to learn about other areas of um, the business world or even outside of the business world. I know folks who have, you know, done a 180 and become a teacher or a doctor. So spending time learning about it is really important. And I think that coupled with the networking and shadowing is getting more of like the day to day. What does that look like in the real world? So for me, this is the last piece I want to talk about, which is really what I'm calling like my secret sauce. And this is where we get to my name. <laughs> um, building your brand name is truly, truly the key to all of this. I've worked at PwC for eight years. And before that, as I mentioned, I started interacting with PwC um, as early as sophomore year. They knew me as Kelly Ryan. With that name, Kelly Ryan, I spent years working so hard building relationships and kind of like proving myself. And so as timing would have it, I was looking to actually switch roles right around when I got married 
And I was not willing to change my name in the work world, even though I did change it legally, because I felt that I had really built that brand name for myself. And I wanted people to, you know, when that resume comes through, I wanted them to ask someone else, oh, hey, we got Kelly Ryan's resume. What do you think of her? I didn't want them to say Kelly Jaffe and then no one says, oh, she's great, blah, blah, blah. So for me, that's a, that was a personal choice that I made. Had I maybe moved to a different company or something, my story may be different and I may be Kelly Jaffe professionally, but right now that's, that's where I stand. So for those who did look on LinkedIn and you're confused, it says Kelly Ryan, but in life outside of work, I go by Kelly Jaffe. So it's tricky, but that's, that's about the brand name piece. Um, relationships. So they're very, very different for, you know, adding someone, connecting to someone as LinkedIn and actually creating a network and relationships. Reaching out to people, learning about them in and outside of work, if they're comfortable sharing, learning, you know, their family life, asking what they like to do outside of work. All of this helps to build those relationships in a way that later on you feel more um, familiarity, comfort, and trust. I'm not sure if anyone's ever heard that. FCT, familiarity, comfort, and trust. Those three things are the key to having a strong relationship. And when you have a strong relationship, folks are probably going to be in your corner more because they understand you, they get you. Effort, I've said it a few times, but I really, I cannot emphasize this enough. No matter what you do, you need to give 100% effort, even if you aren't into it. I knew that second time around going into audit, I was like, this isn't going to miraculously be my dream job. I knew that. But I also knew if I ever wanted to do anything else, I needed people to understand and, and speak and be in my corner and say, yes, Kelly is wonderful for X, Y, and Z. Um, and I don't want to just say that I do that in work. It's also outside of work, too. I think in general, it's always worth it to put your best foot forward. Um, in terms of, I wrote willingness to dive in the deep end. I wouldn't say that I was prepared when I dove into corporate responsibility, even though I had been in Cypher and Actus. It's still different in the work world. Same with marketing. I told you I had only taken the class. I didn't really know. So I spent some time upscaling. I spent time doing those things. But at the end of the day, I joined the group and didn't really know what I was doing. And my boss at the time said something very interesting. He was like, you know, in internal firm services, that's what marketing sits under in other groups at PwC where we're, we're not client facing. We don't do specific client audit or tax or consulting work. And he said, in IFS, we sometimes get a bad rap that we don't work as hard. But really, I think there's just a greater opportunity on the spectrum of there might be some people who just sit and they coast and they do their, their work and they do it well, but they don't necessarily climb the ladder. And then there's other folks who are going to dive right in. They're going to work really hard and they're going to constantly be looking to grow and progress within the firm. And he essentially said like, it's up to you, Kelly, you decide where you want to go with that. And not shocking with my personality. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm diving in and here we go. So, the last bit I want to talk about is the support system, because I think that this is something that doesn't get talked about enough. One of the hardest parts for me personally with making this career switch was actually my internal dialogue. It was me feeling like if I leave audit, am I going to be a failure? Am I going to be giving up all of the time and energy I spent putting into this career path? and just throwing it aside. Are people going to say, oh, she couldn't handle it? Are they going to say, oh, she didn't want to work hard enough and she just wants to have a social life? I was saying these ridiculous things in my head over and over, and it was prohibiting me from seeing the other side of maybe there's a career path out there that's a better fit, and it means that I will progress my career maybe even at a quicker rate. Um, so it took me a really long time to realize and get comfortable with that and say, at the end of the day, if people care about me more than anything, they want me to be happy. And at those end moments, I wasn't so happy. Um, so my, I showed you a picture at the beginning. My husband, who at the time was my boyfriend, was so, so supportive and encouraged me to take this leap. Um, I also have mentioned my dad before. My parents mean so much to me and, and my dad 
worked at one company his whole life and found a career that way. And I could tell, I felt that I was going to let him down. So my husband also helped coach me through, you know, how I was going to have that conversation with my dad and say, I'm, I'm not, I'm moving away from accounting and hopefully you support me in that. And I caveat that in saying, I know many folks probably have tough conversations with loved ones at any point in time, and they might be much tougher than what I'm describing. So I certainly don't want to make it seem like this is the craziest thing you've heard. But for me, it was really tough because I really cared about my, my dad's opinion of me. Um, so for me, that's my secret sauce. It's really spending time diving in and doing as much homework as you can up front and then taking the leap. And I love this picture of saying chance first change because there's a part of you that's always going to feel like, am I leaving this up to chance? What's going to happen? But no matter what, you're not going to know until you dive in. And what I can say now, looking back, is nothing is truly forever. Like, I'm, I'm working in marketing right now. I absolutely love it. I've been progressing and being promoted and learning new things. And I honestly, each new project I work on kind of re-energizes me. But Who's to say that I'll be marketing forever? I, I don't know the answer to that. So the last thing I want to share, and hopefully the, maybe some of you have heard of this, but um, with COVID and everything going on, PwC is a company I mentioned, our corporate responsibility group, and we care about giving back. And, you know, other companies, I think there was maybe a little bit more of a clear line of how they could help. Maybe they could create PPE because they're already a company that produces something. They're a packaged goods company, whatever that may be. At PwC, we certainly were, our corporate responsibility group started donating money, but we still felt like, what do we, what can we give? What can we do and what can we provide? And I mentioned a little bit about upskilling earlier. So at the macro level, Upskilling really means the shift that technology is causing to our world and our jobs. And it's important to start upskilling on those types of um, skills because no matter what field you go into, everything is certainly being disrupted by technology. And that's only going to continue at a rapid pace. As you can see through what we're all going through, we've moved to virtual meetings. People are telecommuting more. There's all these things that are just shifting and many companies are floundering and others are really shining through this. So I'm sharing with you the digital fitness app. It's an app that you can all get on your phone and it's for free. It was originally a paid subscription service that we would sell to our clients and they would have their company's employees use it. And through this, we've decided, you know what? We know that there's a lot of folks out there who maybe lost their jobs. There are students who no longer are in classes in the same way. And this tool allows you to learn at your own pace um, there's 60 different digital trend categories, and you can boost your knowledge. They literally talk about it being like a, a gym, and you can have a coach, and that instructor is going to tell you how often you should study things, and it'll just push you some things, like watch this TED Talk on blockchain. Um, so there's a ton of different subject areas, blockchain, AI, digital thinking, social media, cybersecurity, the, the list really goes on. But I just wanted to give a plug for that because I know many of you, you're in all different stages of your, of your career path and your schooling. Um, this is helpful for any and all of you, but right now, especially if you are moving into the work world, I would say it would be so beneficial to be able to go into an interview saying that you understand some of these topics and that you're feeling like technology is something in one avenue or another that you feel strongly about. Um, I see that moving your resume, you know, higher up and having those stronger interview skills. So it's just something I wanted to plug. Um, so with that, I'm actually going to stop, stop sharing because that's kind of the end of my presentation. And that way I can see everybody's faces again. Um, and Emily, maybe if you want to jump in, I know you said maybe people would be chatting, but let me know how you want to run this part. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much, Kelly. Some wonderful information, um, even for me, always learning for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we can open it up to some questions. If there's anyone that wanted to go first, feel free to put it in the, in the chat to write it in there or feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like. See if there's anyone that wants to take it. And you can ask anything. I'm, I'm very honest. 
as, as most folks at Syracuse know. <laughs> so if there's, if maybe someone will come after this, but I can definitely start off with a question to see. So sure. with the changes that you made over the time that you were at PWC, looking back to your time at SU and really kind of driving towards the accounting side of things, is there anything you would have changed or any maybe advice for a student that maybe has thinks that they have they know the path that they're on and you know you're saying you took that one marketing class is there anything else you would have done differently or you know to kind of maybe diversify yourself a little bit yeah that's actually that's such a great question and it's something that now you know in the moment i couldn't really see any of this but now looking back um so there's a few things I would do differently and there's a few things I would stay the same. I would say overall, I'm still so proud and thankful that I took the route I did. I think having a background in accounting is invaluable. I think, especially in public accounting, what people don't talk about enough is when you're auditing these clients, you are truly learning the ins and outs of other types of businesses. You're learning how they make money, how the money flows through their system, and it's so cool because as someone who doesn't have as much of the entrepreneurial side in me, I wish I did because I'm like, oh, I understand at a much deeper level what it means to run a successful business. Um, so I don't really think that I would necessarily change my, my major. Um, and I think I would probably still do the path that I did um, in starting in accounting. What I would do differently is I definitely did lock into it pretty early. And because of that, I think I kind of put a little bit of blinders on to other classes mm -hmm. um, and understanding the ins and outs. And um, I wish that I had kind of had a little bit op more of an open mind to even just explore them as, as learning opportunities. Maybe it wasn't going to be my major, but maybe I actually just stayed more interested in other things. Um, I was talking with my husband last night. I think it's the DeSecchi's guy. I've read like an article about him, but he says to be interesting, you need to be interested. And I think that's so key. I think mm -hmm. it's really important to stay interested in multiple topics and just continue to kind of build that broader learning um, so that you always keep your eyes open because you don't know when an opportunity is going to arise. You don't know when something else is going to come up and it might take you in a different direction, but it might be the perfect direction. Yeah, no, I agree. And not, yeah, not saying to change majors or anything like that, but, uh, but being open and taking a couple of different classes in different areas, I think that would help to broaden your spectrum and keep your, the options open. For sure. You never know, right? Um, For sure. I'm just going to see if there's another question. I know Allison put one in the comments. So we'll go on to that one. So, oh, go ahead, Jolie. Oh, Jolie, oh, I, I think has one. one. Oh, sure. um, I actually had a similar um, path to you about last year. I was an accounting major, took the major classes. And about halfway through the curriculum, I decided this wasn't for me. Um, so I switched more towards the supply chain and the retail management um, major focus and career perspective. Um, I guess in your opinion, more shifting towards more creative, more of a creative outlet with marketing. Do you see yourself in five years, 10 years time working with PwC, staying in marketing or in a similar route? Or do you see yourself trying to shift more towards a different company not originally suited in the big four accounting firms? Do you see yourself or giving yourself the option of looking at something outside of the big four and stepping into a bigger marketing role? Sure. That's an awesome question. And yeah, it is really interesting because I'm, you know, compared to my peers, um, most of my friends have worked at upwards of four companies at this point. And that's definitely, I would say, in our world seems to be the more common route. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I always am keeping my eyes peeled and learning new things. I right now feel really, really fulfilled with what I do in marketing. Um, we recently, um, I don't know if it's been a year yet, but we had a, a new um, chief marketing officer come in and I couldn't rave about him more. I, I love to work in an organization that he leads. And so for me, progressing within PwC marketing is my, is my current goal. Um, I love the team that I joined. I've been on it since this past August, so almost coming up on a year. 
And it definitely re-energized me. And like I kind of mentioned before, when you work at a company that's got 55,000 employees in the U.S., Mm -hmm. every small group you move to, Mm -hmm. it feels like its own little small cohort. And it's got a different personality. It's got a different vibe. And that's what really is fun to me. I I would say, um, I think a lot of people feel this way, is that our whole life has kind of been in these small groupings of boxes, right? You did elementary school, middle school, high school, college. They're all like these chunks of time and then things shift in a more significant way. And I think that it's common for many of us, especially in our like age cohort to after three or four years say, Oh, okay. Like I'm kind of looking for something new. Mm -hmm. And I feel lucky that at a place of PwC, I'm able to kind of, find that what's next and what's new and different and energizing. Um, But that is to say, like, I don't know that I'll be there for life. And at the current moment, I feel really proud to work at the company and and plan on staying. But I think you're really smart in saying that, you know, you've you've switched your, your major, but you also are aware that especially with supply chain and retail, like the opportunities for jobs are, are endless and you can work at a number of different companies and, Mm -hmm. and flex that creative muscle when you want and flex that more um, logical analytical side with supply chain when you want to. Um, So I, I think, you know, you're going down a great path and I just think always have your eyes open and be willing to learn and, and grow. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was great. So we have a bunch of questions that just came through in the chat. So we'll go through those. So the first is, should I find a mentor now? And how would I do that while I'm still in college? Great question. So the short answer is yes. I think the term mentor sometimes seems a bit daunting. Um, I think it's more just start to talk to people and, and try to find someone that you at least feel like you've got a connection to and and you, there's some aspirations there. There's something about their career, their life that, that interests you. Um, I don't want to say this wrong. So definitely Emily, Allison, Kara, anyone correct me, but we have a few tools within Whitman Mm -hmm. that we can connect and myself and some other folks on the, um, Whitman Alumni Council and and the larger the the uh, big board, we all are open and have ways to mentor and connect with students. Um, and that's one way that if you all take advantage of the program, I think it's called Whitman Connect. Am I saying that right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So if you join Whitman Connect, there's ways that you can ask questions, but there's also a little bit more of a formal mentoring program that they offer. And you can determine if you want to pick someone um, who's going to have a similar um, career interest to you. Um, I think that's really important. Also, I know Josh, a few weeks ago, led something on LinkedIn, connecting with with Syracuse alumni who, you know, if there's companies that you find interesting already that, you know, you might not necessarily work there, but you're like, oh, I love X, Y, and Z. See if anyone from Syracuse works there. Send them that personalized message that's, just saying, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit more, um, give them kind of like a call to action. Like I'd like to speak with you about blank and start to have those conversations. I don't think it's ever too early to start having mentors. Um, and also know that you can have more than one and they can change and grow as your career changes and grows. Sometimes that person might not really fit in that way anymore. It doesn't mean you dump them as a person and never talk to them again, but in that more formal mentoring, you can kind of move away to, to someone else that fits that role for you. Great. So yeah, hopefully we can get through these other three questions. So Allie had posted, what do you like most about audit? And did you ever consider tax? Good question. So I did not consider tax personally. It was just not for me when I took the the course in college. And it's really funny because now in my job, I am living and breathing tax much more than I anticipated right now, especially as you can imagine with all the legislations that's been passed with COVID. We've got the CARES Act and there's all these really technical things. And as a marketer, it's my role to help get that information out to our clients and help them understand how we as a firm can help them. So ironically enough, I never considered tax on the client service side. And now here I am wrapped up in it. 
My favorite thing about audit was definitely um, the idea of working for a common goal with my team. I found the team camaraderie to be incredibly welcoming. Um, you certainly are working lots of hours, but you all pause and take lunch at the same time. You get to know each other. You're all in the same age cohort. You're all going through the silly little trials and tribulations of transitioning to living in a new city, potentially. I mean, some folks go to NYU or whatnot, but like I had to learn how to grocery shop and carry groceries home without a car and not buy too much. Like all those little things, what audit provided for me was a space where I could do work that I enjoyed and work really hard, but meet a ton of people that I also connected with on another level. Great. So yeah, I just, I want to do one more question. There are two other questions and I'll just kind of preface the silly test that you referred to. Do you happen to have a link that you'd be willing to share with the students on this? So the specific one I did, I definitely will test it out. I recently have sent it to someone else in my work world who was like, I don't know what to do with my career. And I want to say there was a paywall. Like, I think you had to pay a price for it, okay. but I have others that aren't. So I'll send all of them, maybe Emily to you and yep. you and I can work through which ones are worth Absolutely. Worthwhile. And we can share them with those that are on here. Great. But yeah, I wanted to awesome. go quickly back to um, Victoria had a question because you had mentioned a lot about upskilling. She's excited about the digital fitness app. She's going to check that out. But um, she cool. was wondering what specific things did you help with your transition to the marketing role that you were really focusing on to prepare you since you felt like you were kind of starting all over again? Great question. Um, so yeah, Victoria, I, you know, when I thought about marketing, I, I was so lost at like, what am I going to be working on? I don't really understand. So I felt comfortable that I knew what we were selling. I got that because I worked in, in audit and I understood tax and a little bit of consulting. Um, what I did was I went on um, online and just searched for general, like, digital marketing courses. And I read a few different, I want to say they were, I will not call them a blog, but they were more professional than that about kind of like the, the dummies guide to marketing. And I read about using your creativity and making sure that there's always a, a voice of empathy when you're speaking to clients or potential clients. Um, and I really just kind of laid the groundwork for whether I was working on events or email campaigns or whatever that was, I tried to understand the lens of, of more of like the creative and writing side. What I couldn't prepare for as much was understanding the technology piece, the marketing technology. So that was something that when I joined the group, I asked, and, and many firms will have this. I think PwC does a particularly great job at um, having resources. We have a whole website that's dedicated to learning and development. And I went on then once I kind of had joined the group and took a ton of courses that they offered both about marketing technology and, and general marketing. So hopefully, depending on where you're working, they might have that. If not, there are resources online. You just got to Google a lot. <laughs> Great. Well, I want to be um, sensitive of our time. We are at one o'clock to stick to kind of the hour. So that went very fast, I'm sure. Um, I was going to say, Allison um, Welsh had put on there for those who are interested in Whitman Connect, there's the link for syracuse.peoplegrove.com to connect with you, Kelly. And then also we did share your LinkedIn. Perfect. So hopefully if anyone has additional questions, they could reach out to you in either, either way. Absolutely. And, yes. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you again, Kelly, for, for being here today, for sharing this information. Um, we truly appreciate it, and uh, we, we can't thank you enough, so thank you. Of course, and thanks, everyone, for your awesome follow-up questions. I really enjoyed speaking with all of you today, and reach out if you have any others. Yes, and just last to mention, we do have two more alumni career conversations currently set as of right now for the next two weeks. Next Friday, May 22nd, we will have Mike Gersha, who is the CEO of um, Rookie Road Incorporated. He'll be speaking on the value of entrepreneurial thinking and problem solving. And we also then will have the following Friday, May 29th, 
Um, it looks like in early afternoon, we'll be able to send that information out to you, but that topic will be around essential skills that can propel your career really in any industry with, um, with Oriana Fuentes. So also with the YWAC too. So I'm sure Kelly knows all of that. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, thank you all for being here today and uh, we really appreciate all the information. So have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Have a good one.